guys we already had a look into how you can modify logistic regression from linear regression just by using uh, fitting of an S curve instead of a linear regression line right so that is very simple we understood how our probabilities look like so pr our predicted probability for it belonging to the class equals to 1 was given by y equals to 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus theta naught plus theta 1 x 1 plus theta 2 x 2 and so on and so forth so now all that we remain to understand of logistic regression is how do we find out this particular parameters theta naught and theta 1 right so if we can understand how we kind of go so to summarize this problem for you we have y hat which is which is probability that the predicted class equals to 1 is given by this particular equation 1 plus epsilon minus theta naught plus theta 1 x1 plus theta 2 x2 and so on and so forth right so we already understand this we already understand why we have used an s curve because we wanted our model to be robust to outliers and we see i've seen also how s curve is robust to outliers so all now that we need to understand about logistic regression is how do you come up with this particular parameters right theta 1 theta 2 so to answer that question frankly there's not much of an answer there but it's a almost similar to logistic sorry it's almost similar to linear regression and that is something that we can that we are already familiar with right so there's just one small tweak and this is the second tweak that i've been talking about so if you remember the starting of the session i told you there were two tweaks that we are going to do to linear regression to make it modify to, to logistic regression so the first tweak is this that we have changed from instead of predicting y as theta naught x1 plus theta theta naught plus theta 1 x1 plus theta 2 x2 and so forth we are going to predict y as the sigmoid function of the same prediction right and this, there's a second tweak that we are going to do right now which is in terms of how the model is being learned right how the training of the model happens so i'm going to tell you that tweak i'm not going to keep it a suspect uh, yes i'm not going to keep it a surprise for from you most of it but let's first understand uh, how did we do it for linear regression let's recap that for a bit and then we can kind of understand how the same thing happens for logistic regression so what did we do for linear regression for linear regression what we used as what we did to learn this parameters theta naught and theta 1 right what did we do we took a prediction first we took a loss function right so what is that loss function it was called the msc loss right if you remember and what is your msc loss given as msc loss is y prediction minus y actual right or y target and you square that and you sum that for all the possible y i i equals to 1 to m and divided by m m or 2m or however you want to use it so this is what our loss function looks like right so for linear regression if you clearly remember so this was our predicted value predicted so if it was housing example we were predicting the housing price and then the actual target housing price which is actually there in the data we take a difference sum of them square them and then sum them and then average that value right that is our msc loss so and what we did finally to find out theta naught and theta one was we basically plotted this and we saw that this was a convex function so cost if you put your cost with respect to theta you would be able to see that this is a convex function and all we did was use gradient descent to kind of figure out what is the best possible value of theta theta best for which we have the minimum value of cost function sorry minimum value of cost function right so all we wanted to do was basically minimize this cost function value so whichever values of theta gave me this particular least value of cost or which basically meant the least value of the mean msc loss is the one that i went ahead with right so my whole job of doing gradient descent while doing gradient descent was basically finding out this set of parameters theta such that this cost function is minimized and that's exactly the same kind of analogy we are going to follow into logistic regression as well so let's let's first kind of take out time so if you have to do the same kind of thing how would you do that for logistic regression so in logistic regression this is your target let's say discrete let's take a discrete example and kind of understand how you do it so you have a y target zero you have a y target one and y target says zero right so there are three examples and you have y say predicted the probability that it would belong to class one 
so let that value be 0.8 or let's say 0.2 here let's say it be 0.7 and let's say it be 0.8 here right so what is the predicted class if you remember the predicted class for this particular value so for predicted class apart from prediction you need something more which is the threshold so what is that threshold that is something you have to decide now rationally the threshold is 0.5 so if you use a rational threshold of 0.5 then you would come out the prediction class would be 0 because this value is less than 0 0.5 this value is greater than 0 0.5 so the predicted class is 1 and the predicted class in this case would again be 1 right so you can see this is the example we are clearly misclassifying right so what do we do want to do right now right so we want to basically figure out if we can use the MSC loss as it is right can we use the MSC loss as it is so that's the first question to answer right why do we need to even change MSC loss ideally if we can use the same loss that we had used earlier then we should be able to do good with everything as it is from the previous case right then we don't need to worry much so can we use MSC loss again as it is so if we have to use MSC loss then for that what we have to do is for each of these particular examples we have to take the difference between the prediction and the actual values so the actual value is 0 and the predicted value is 0 0.2 right so you take a square of yt minus y pred square so in this case it is 0 minus 0 0.2 square which is 0 0.04 this is 1 minus 0 0.7 which is 0 0.3 square 0 0.09 and this is 0 minus 0. Point, so in this case the actual value is 0 but you have predicted it to be 0 0.8 right so the prediction minus actual value is 0 0.8 square which is 0 0.64 right so what do we come up with what is the um, what is the loss final MSC value comes out to be it's 0 0.09 plus 0 0.09 plus 0 0.64 so that is roughly 0 0.82 by 3 which is roughly around 0 0.27 right so that is what your mean square error comes out to be so ideally now let's consider a model in which so this was a model where we had one case wrong right so now let's consider another model so the same example yt is 0 1 0 but you are probably much better off this time so you have a model which for corresponding to 0 you have a prediction which is almost close to 0 say 0 0.1 you have a model which is for 1 it predicts a probability of 0 0.9 and for this also it predicts a probability of say 0 0.2 so can we calculate the MSC loss again here so MSC loss yt minus y prediction square so this is 0 minus 0 0.1 square is 0 0.01 0 minus 1 minus 0 0.9 which is 0 0.01 again and 0 minus 0 0.2 square which is 0 0.2 square is 0 0.4 right so what is the final MSC loss here it comes out to be MSC loss comes out to be 0 0.4 plus so 0 0.6 by 3 which is roughly equal to 0 0.02 so you can clearly see for a model that was much better in prediction right so when I'm predicting this is a much better prediction right because we got all of the answers correct in this case in this case there was one at least one miscorrect and also we see that for whatever value it is predicting it is predicting pretty closely right so if it's predicting one it's predicting with a probability of 0 0.9 whereas this is predicting with a probability of 0 0.7 so obviously this is this model is much better than this right because whatever it is predicting it is not only predicting it correctly it is predicting also with a much more higher confidence and in this case also it is predicting zero and it's predicting with a lower confidence and this is predicting with a slightly towards 0 0.5 so if it's predicting zero it should ideally have predicted with a probability of 0 0.0.01 right because there's a probability of it belonging to class one so probability of the same data set belonging to class 0 is 1 minus 0 0.1 so it is a 0.9 90% probability it says for belonging to class 0 and this is 80% probability for this example to belong to class 0 so obviously this model is better because it has got it is predicting it with a higher confidence right so assuming that you want to also account for the fact that your confidence should be something that is you want to account for the fact that a model if it is predicting it should not only predict correctly but also predict it with higher confidence so that you know your models are much more robust so then you what you this 
clearly seems that the MSC loss is something that is a valid loss, right? Are you able to appreciate this fact that MSC loss in this case is something around 0 0.02, which is a very good model, right? So this is a good model and this is a bad model, right? So in the case of bad model, we see the MSC loss is actually high. In case of a good model, we see that MSC loss is really low, right? So this, what this point kind of proves is that MSC loss is actually a good measure to measure in case a good loss measure if you want to use it as it is from linear regression, right? So ideally, we could basically in theoretical terms, we can actually use MSC loss as it is from linear regression and still do a good job of it. There's not really much of a need to kind of modify this. But here comes the second tweak. The second tweak of this problem is basically instead of using MSC loss, I'm going to talk about some new loss. And I'm now the point to appreciate would be basically is this new loss that I'm going to describe you? Why is this new loss required in the first place? And secondly, is this new loss even a loss function? So again, we are going to talk about the bad model and the good model. And we have to see how our model performs for both the bad and the good model using the new loss function, right? So if we see that loss is really low for a good model and the loss is really high for a bad model, that would kind of prove the fact that yes, it's a valid loss function. And also we have to see is that if this particular how we the, how the next loss that I introduced to you is better than the current MSC loss. Yeah, now let's take an example of a let's take another example and let's try and understand what we are going to try and do in the new loss function. So let's say you have the target and the prediction value. So one first case the prediction target value is one but you have predicted it with the probability 0.95 and next case the target value is say again one but you are predicting it with probability 0.1 right. So this is clearly something that is, uh, so in this case we are getting it correct, in this case we are getting it wrong, right? So now let's calculate the MSC loss. MSC loss is basically, for, for the first example, MSC1 is 1 minus 0.95 square, right? So which is 0 0.05 square, which is around 0 0.25, right? So MSC2, which is 1 minus 0.1 square, which is 0.9 square, which is 0.81, right? So now, instead of MSC loss, let's, MSC loss was target minus prediction square, right? So now there's a new loss. The new loss is minus ln y target. If y is, if you are predicted, if your yt is equals to 1 and it's minus ln 1 minus y target, if y target equals to 0, right? So basically this says that if your predicted target is 1, then you take the probability as it is. If your predicted target is 0, so then take 1 minus probability because this is the probability of it, the example belonging to class 1, right? So if your class level is zero, then you basically want to check what is the probability of that class example belonging to class zero. So you take the log of that probability and that probability is given by one minus probability of this. So y is, y hat is your probability that predicted example is equals to one, right? And one minus y hat is probability y belongs to zero, right? So what you're doing is basically the, for whichever class it is, you are taking the log of the probability. So if the target class is one, then you're taking the log of probability of it belonging to class one. If the target class is zero, you're taking the probability of it belonging to class zero. So this is the probability of the example belonging to class zero, right? So this is a new loss function that you have here. So now using the new loss function, let's see what is, so let's call it new loss. Okay, so or probably let's call it and let's give it a name. It's let's what is a good name for it? So you have a log here and there's a negative out here. So let's call it a negative log loss. So NLL, right? So negative log loss is basically this particular thing, right? So if you have a log of your probability of your probability of the correct class, the correct class as in correct as in defined in the target variable, right? So whatever is the target variable, that is your correct class. 
and for that correct class if your correct class is 1 then you take the probability of it belonging to class 1 if it's a correct class is 0 then you take the probability of 1 minus that because this is y hat gives you the probability of belonging to class 1 and 1 minus y hat gives you the probability of belonging to class 0 so if the correct class is 0 you take the probability of it belonging to class 0 if the target class is 1 then you take the probability of it belonging to class 1 so now negative log loss in the first case so first case my target class is 1 so I'm going to take directly minus ln of 0.95. So now if you do this calculation, so ln of 0.95 is roughly 0 0.05. So minus of minus 0 0.05. So this is 0 0.05 roughly. And now you take the negative log likelihood in the second case. It is minus ln of 0.9. So if you take log of natural log of 0.9, you will see this comes out to be somewhere around 2.31 or something. So minus, so yeah, basically this is minus of minus 2.31. So this is basically plus 2.31. So what I'm saying, so now if you compare this case, so this is the case in which our model got a good result, right? In this case, you see that this model is, MSC is basically penalizing it a lot more, right? Even though my model was actually correct. In this case, you see the negative log loss is actually low, lower, right? If it's because this was a correct classification, my loss should actually be low, right? If it's a correct classification. In this case, this is the first example, right? Uh, my target class was 1 and my predicted class was 0.95. This is what I predicted. You see, if I take MSC loss, my actual loss value is really high. Whereas in this case, my loss value is really low. In, because it was an it was an incorrect classification this is how it should be right this is what you want right because if it's a correct classification you want the lo loss value to be as low so this is obviously not something that is good right because this case MSC loss has given you a higher loss value even though you had done a correct classification in this case in the second case let's see so in this second case we actually did an incorrect classification right in this case we actually end up with a higher log loss Sorry, in this case, we end up with a lower log loss for MSC, it's 0.81. Whereas for negative log likely use, you get up a higher log loss, right? So this log loss is higher, which is exactly what you again want, right? If it's an unclassified example, if, they, if you are not classifying it correctly, then you want a higher ex, higher loss function, loss value for that incorrectly classified example. For the same incorrectly classified example, when your probability is the same, the MSC loss gives you a lower value. So basically, if it's an incorrect value, MSC does not penalize it as much as negative log likelihood, right? So again, this case, you don't want this. So the point to understand here is this, that your MSC mean squared error loss is basically something that is not penalizing. If it's a correct classification, it is probably penalizing it a lot more. If it's an incorrect classification, it is penalizing a lot less. Whereas in the case of neg negative log likelihood, you, you can see this, that your the if it's an incorrect classification, which is this, your log loss, your loss value is much higher as compared to MSC loss. But in case of correct classification, your negative log likelihood loss is much lower as compared to MSC. So if it's a correct classification, it is penalizing it less. If it's an incorrect classification, it is penalizing it exponentially higher. So this is why this particular loss, right? So this particular loss, it's negative log loss is the one that we want to use for logistic regression, right? So this is the case. You want to use negative log likelihood. This is the one that is something which is more suited for classification task. And this is why we use this. So now to kind of write down the exact formula for you. So the negative log loss is basically given as minus ln P, where P is the probability of correct class. What is correct class? Correct class is the one which is there in target, right? Or so instead of probability of correct class, you can use probability of target class. So if there are, so let's say you have y and you have, this is, this is the target variable, which is 0, 1, 0. And you have the corresponding prediction values, right? So prediction values are say for prediction equal to class one, right? So it's 0 0.8. 0 0.1 and this is 0 0.2 right so this are prediction probabilities for class 1 this is what you get using the s curve right 
so what is the prediction probability for class 0 is 1 minus 0 0.8 0 0.2 1 minus 0 0.1 0 0.9 1 minus 0 0.2 is 0.8 right so now what is your negative log likelihood is minus ln of so in this case the correct class is 0 so I'm going to use this so minus ln of 0.2 in this case the correct class the target class is 1 so in this case the log negative log likelihood is minus ln of 0.1 which is from this and again the correct class is 0 probability of which is minus ln of 0 0.8 right so this is exactly how negative log likelihood is calculated now there's a slightly complex version of the same problem which just uses this probability right so just using this how would you how would you come up with this so you don't use this right so the formula for this goes like this minus y target into ln of y hat minus 1 minus y target into ln of 1 minus y hat now just try and understand what happens if your target is zero if your target is zero then this term goes for zero right and then all you are left up with minus one minus y target is zero so one minus zero is one so one into ln of one minus y hat right so remember this y hat is something that you get out of the s curve which is basically nothing but the probability of it being belonging to class zero so which is nothing but ln of y hat zero right so this is what you get if your target class is one now if your target class is say target class is zero so, 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 sorry this is target class zero so now negative log likelihood let me again write down the formula right so now if your target class is 1 if your target class is 1 this term goes for 0 so then you are left with this right so minus 1 into ln of y hat right so ln of y hat is nothing but the ln of so y hat is already the probability of it belonging to class 1 right so minus of this so that is for target class 1 So for target class of 0, you see the probability comes out to be ln of probability of it belonging to class 0. Target class 1, it belongs, it comes out to be ln of probability of it belonging to class 1, right? Because y hat that you get out of the S curve is directly the probability of it belonging to class 0. So this is what you get out of the <coughs> prediction probabilities from S curve, right? So now that you understand this, this is, this is the formula for this is this whole thing is the formula for uh, negative log likelihood and now let's go back to the slides to understand how this kind of plays out so so yeah so as you have already probably seen for linear regression the so let's just go to the linear regression slide so for linear regression this is the cost curve that we have used and as you can see we have already talked about this is also a valid cost curve in case of logistic regression as well it's not absolutely invalid except that we have seen that for a classification task it is obviously much more suited to use a negative log likelihood because because we have seen that this particular cost function which is the msc loss is not really good because it if it's a correct classification it penalizes more as compared to negative log likelihood whereas in correct of, in case of incorrect classification it penalizes less so that is something that you don't want to do while you are doing classification tasks so that's why we have to change that cost function so so obviously we also have talked about in the previous lecture also why cost function needs to be convex so i'm not going to go into all those details right now that convexity is obviously we'd want to find out using gradient descent so gradient descent is all about finding the minima and the minima can only be expected in a convex function i've expressed that in the linear regression part as well 
so you obviously we would want to go ahead with something which is a convex function so so i've already explained to you this is the particular function that we use for negative log likelihood and this is a second tweak that we do to the overall entire algorithm we have already uh, i have already told you the first tweak which we do which is the s curve fitting and this is a second tweak these are the only two tweaks that we are doing to linear regression to make it more suitable for classification purposes <laughs> so this is the loss function that we use this is called the negative log likelihood now let's try and plot how this negative log like so now let's get an intuitive idea of why negative log likelihood is a good fun. i've already given an intuitive idea using an example and now let's try and see so on the y axis you see the cost function and x axis you see the uh, prediction values so you see that this is for target class if target class is one you see that your prediction value as close as it becomes to one your cost function is almost so here on this part of the curve you can see that as your as your probabilities tend to close towards one which is the right because which is the right thing right because if your class is one your target class is one you want your probabilities to be as high as or as close as one right so as your probabilities tend to one you see the cost function value goes down right and you as your probabilities go towards zero you see the cost function values are relatively lot higher right and the same thing you see if your target class is zero right if your target class is zero you see that as your probabilities this is again the probabilities as you obtain from the s curve so these are probability for it belonging to example belonging to class zero right sorry class one so h theta x is basically the probability of the example belonging to class one and you see as the probabilities tend towards one which is something you don't want because your target class is zero you want the probabilities to be as close to zero as possible so if you do that you see that here in here the cost function is very low the cost is really low if you have target values if your probabilities are very close to zero which which means basically your probability of class zero is extremely high so this is probability of class one and so probability of class zero is one minus this probability so as your probabilities of example belonging to class one goes towards zero which means probability of it belonging to class zero goes towards one you see the cost function is low right because the target variable is zero and that's what you want so this is an intuitive idea of what is a convex function and what you do here so so this is a simplified cost function this is something that i've already told you so then our equation is this and uh, this is the same thing right this is just to kind of summarize so when y equals to zero your function is basically minus log of one minus the prediction and your prediction being the probability of it belonging to class one so one minus that prediction is the probability of that belonging to class zero right and this is the first this is a initial this is a case where your target variable is one and you can see that the prediction is minus log of the probability of it belonging to class one itself h theta x i have told repeatedly is basically the probability of it belonging to class one right so this is a simplified cost function that you see there and now this is the gradient descent thing so now after this there's nothing more which is different from linear regression you now have a cost function which is convex in terms of your theta and you do the same thing right so theta at every step you are going to go down the gradient you are going to go descent and then figure out if what is the best parameter set of theta which minimizes your cost function right so i've already explained that in the linear regression slide and linear regression lecture so i'm not going to go over it right now again so yeah so we are almost done with logistic regression there are just few parts which are still remaining to kind of solve so now we have ended logistic regression let me summarize this for you the first part is we take a linear regression curve which is a straight line and instead of fitting a straight line we did fit a s curve that was the first tweak the second tweak was instead of using a mean square error loss we used a negative log likelihood loss and those are the only two tweaks that we did to linear regression and we have logistic regression so as i've explained to you already this particular thing where you use instead of using mean square error loss you use negative log likelihood you can use that uh, mean square error as well but except that it won't be called logistic regression and the first part is we did s curve fitting why because we wanted our model to be more robust right when we added outliers in the first case we saw that our decision boundary changed very quickly when we were using a linear regression straight line 
to counter that we had a s curve that we had fitted instead of fitting a straight line so now that you understand these are the two most things that goes on training time what are the more important things that goes on in testing time in testing time there's again slightly bit of difference from linear regression earlier linear regression would give you a direct prediction value so housing price if you were trying to predict it would directly give you the prediction value in this case what you get prediction is basically a probability score the probability score is a score which you get after sigmoid after you applied sigmoid on the entire linear regression curve equation so it's not exactly a it's not a value which can take place any value it is a value which is restrained between 0 and 1 so what you get is a probability score of the example belonging to class 0 class 1 so what we do for test time is something that is remaining to answer so what is the thing that we do for test time in case of linear regression what we had was the model gave us directly the prediction prices right so if you're doing housing price prediction the model gave you directly the housing price prediction as it is in case of logistic regression it's slightly more different because now we are dealing with a classification problem as opposed to a continuous regression problem so in classification problem what we now have to do is the prediction value is a probability that we get now which is obtained by doing a sigmoid transformation so now after s curve fitting for any given point we get a probability which is lying between 0 and 1 and based on that probability and the threshold which we decide for ourselves uh, we come up whether the corresponding predicted class is 1 or predicted class is 0 so, so for every prediction you need two things right the model which is this s curve that we have fitted from the s curve you will get the probability of the example belonging to class 1 and the threshold is the second thing that you require so the threshold is something you decide by yourself the threshold is normally rationally set it to be 0.5 but you could use different thresholds for different business applications and depending on the threshold if the, your prediction probability is greater than threshold you come up with a value which is you predict the class as positive class and if your value predicted probability is less than the threshold you predict it as negative class so given that is the thing now we are left with the last part log on to gray atoms learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates